Welcome back to another instant reaction edition of the Night Report podcast. Richie, this is a bit more of a somber tone. Uh, usually these are pretty exciting podcasts to record, but this one is to record a reaction to us losing our only 2023 commit, Jasir Peterson from uh, Union City. He was yep. a teammate of 2022 commit, um, Nelson Monegro. What happened with this one? Uh, this sounds a little familiar to Jojo Bermudez, just a little more um, clarity and, and uh, transparency, I guess. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so this is bad news, obviously. So this is probably going to be our most popular podcast for some reason. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, he just he basically told our Penn State writers the other day that he was going to visit there this weekend. Shot some text back and forth just to try to confirm with him. I got the confirmation, posted it, and um, it's just it's like what Greg usually does. Like you're not supposed to visit elsewhere if you're committed. If you're committed, it's like you're dating a girl. You can't be going around and be like, yeah, you're pretty hot, but like this girl, I'm going to go talk to her first and see what she thinks. Yeah, I'm just talking to her on Bumble. I'm just talking to her on, yeah. on Hinge. We're not going to actually meet up. We're not going to do well, anything. We've been dating okay. for like a year, so it's yeah. like it's, it's actually almost a year to the day where he committed. Yep. And it's like, yeah, we've been dating for like almost a year, but I'm starting to see like other options out there. Like you never know. So mm -hmm. it's, yep. yeah. So it, it's kind of, that's basically what happened. It's, it's like, you can't really be committed if you're going to visit elsewhere. I think it was more of a mutual decision at the end of the day. Uh, he talked to the staff about it. Um, I believe they're out in a couple schools this uh, today, actually visiting people. I don't know if they stopped in Union City or not. I haven't confirmed that, which would be like probably when they probably talk to him or talk to the coaches over there or whatever. But um, it is the open period now for recruiting again. Kids are going to be on campus this weekend. So there is a bright side to this. You're going to get some new kids on campus, new faces, old faces even too. And they're still doing pretty well with other offensive linemen around the country. Yeah, so uh, obviously it's a bummer to lose a commitment. It's a bummer to lose your only commitment. Do you think there's any chance that we get him back in the fold or do you see this one as he's gone already? Um, with Union City, you, there's a chance that you could get him back in the fold. Um, but like most decommitments, I really don't see it happening at the end of the day. It's like at that point, you probably would have just stayed committed. Um, this is a kid that only had one offer and it was from Rutgers and committed like almost immediately on the spot. I might have been a couple hours after he received the offer that he technically committed. But um, yeah, uh, he wants to kind of play the game, which I kind of understand a little bit as well. Um, you want to go out there, see how many offers you can get. He's a very, very good prospect. Um, he's, he's another mauler in the middle. Um, offensive guard, probably going to play offensive tackle, or he might have actually played on the opposite side of uh, Manegro for Union City. Um, he's a little bit of a weird situation because he probably can play guard at the next level, but besides the point, he's got one offer. He's a top eight kid. I think we have number eight right now in the state of New Jersey. In our rankings, he's a top 50 offensive tackle in the country. Um, he's going to get a ton of offers. Now that he's decommitted, I wouldn't be shocked if he just tweeted out about six or seven offers from Power 5 schools. He's very, very talented, and it's going to sting a little bit that he's not committed to Rutgers anymore, but it does go to show you that Greg has a pretty good eye for talent, got this kid in the fold very quickly. It's just a matter of not being able to hang on to him, which, which kind of does suck, but it is Union City. They, they do produce a, lot, a ton of athletes. They have another guy in the 2024 class, and Anthony, um, Anthony Crawford, who has a UMass and Ole Miss offer. Guess who gave him that Ole Miss offer? Our good buddy Partridge and Marquise Watson. So I do think um, you'll see you'll see um, you'll see them pursue Josiah Peterson until the very end. It's going to be a typical um, I hate to compare it, but an Igmanosin type situation, an Aaron Young type situation. All these guys, um, they kind of like de they decommit. You're going to pursue them till the very, very end of the, their commitment. Maybe it goes your way in the end. Maybe it doesn't. Only time will tell with this one. So I, I already know what a lot of people are going to ask on the board, like, oh, we took all these offensive line transfers. Is it because – is that the reason why he's decommitting? Can you just put that one to bed? No, that's not the reason whatsoever. These Most of these transfers have one or two years. By the time Peterson even sees the field in college football, these guys will be long gone. So it doesn't yeah, really Anybody matter. with two – less than two years of eligibility will be gone by then. So yeah. that's Willie Tyler, that's – that's Dunlap, that's that's Dorenzo, so they're gone. Dorenzo, yeah, so I saw it on the on the free board a little bit, and that's a ton of speculation just from a fan's perspective, which I totally understand. I, I get it. Um, but, yeah, no, there's, there's just – that has nothing to do at all. 
So I know that Union City, there was a kid, I think in class of 2015, uh, Steven Gonzalez, I think he's still involved with the program there. Is that kind of playing a part in his interest in Penn State? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it definitely plays a role. Um, Penn State obviously is looking for offensive linemen just like every other school in the country right now. And when you have a kid that's not too far away, three and a half, four hours, um, they, they were pursuing him. They were kind of are in his ear a little bit. They wanted to get him up on campus. He's going to go visit there this Saturday for their junior day, which a lot of targets for Rutgers as well are visiting. They're visiting Rutgers or Penn State on Saturday and then Rutgers on Sunday. You'll see a little bit overlap between the list that we've posted. Um, but, yeah, Steven Gonzalez is, is like volunteering over there while still trying to make it in the NFL a little bit. I know he's uh, technically a free agent right now, if I, I believe. Um, I talked to him quite, quite a bit here and then. Um, very nice dude. But, yeah, I mean, having a Penn State guy around the team a little bit is going to help, obviously, the Nittany Lions in the end. But um, is it going to play a huge factor? No, but it, it definitely helps because he did play for Franklin. Um, he's a Penn State guy, went from Jersey to Penn State and made the NFL for a little bit. Still trying, but, yeah, I mean, it'll play a factor. Yeah, I thought I saw him tweet out something recently because, you know, the USFL is coming back. I think he tweeted mm. at – they have, like, a player um, – I don't – I wouldn't say it's quite tryouts, but you can submit your film if you'd like to be considered for the, the pool of players in the USFL, and I think he submitted his information for that. Yeah, it makes um, sense. I mean, the, the Rutgers fans are probably hoping he gets that shot now, so then he's away from Union City, but – Rutgers exactly. has connections to Union City as well. And Nelson Manegro, yeah, Man former, te former teammate, Manny Manegro. Manny yep. um, I'm sure I'm missing a couple others. But, uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's a loss for Rutgers, yes. But at the end of the day, you're, you're pursuing so many offensive linemen out there. And it sounds like one could be on the, on the way to committing to the Scarlet Knights pretty soon. Different position, I'll speculate, than where Peterson probably would have played. But, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, you guys can all take a guess at what guy that is. It's a guy we've all – kind of heard discussed as leaning towards Rutgers for a while. So uh, that'll all we'll be saying about that. Uh, so yeah, a bummer guys. Uh, I don't like recording these uh, negative instant reactions, but you know, that is life. Good things, bad things. You gotta find a way to deal with both of them. Uh, yeah. I, I don't, know I don't think there's any. Like... I'm sorry. Do you want me to pile on this bad news or? Yeah, let's, let's hear more. I know we just talked about it off air, but like I'm looking at New Jersey's top 15 for 2023 and it's, it's not optimistic. There's already one going to Notre Dame, one going to Iowa. Um, Rutgers didn't offer Marco Lanes, who's going to Iowa. They didn't offer Bonsu, who's number three in the class. Basanta seems like he's going out of state. It's, it is going to be a little bit of a struggle for Rutgers in terms of New Jersey recruits, at least in the top 10, based on our rankings. Uh, but there's always hope because they're doing very good in Florida. So it might, it's literally Shiano one point all over again. If the yeah. Jersey kids aren't going to come, we're going to go down to Florida or go to another state, go to hell, they're going to Kentucky now. Um, go to one of these states and just start recruiting them and bring them up and then figure it out from there. And eventually these Jersey guys will kind of take a little peek and uh, start turning their heads when they see Rutgers. I think it's kind of eye-opening. We had that conversation with Willie Tyler about him talking about the level of competition he could face on a week-to-week -week basis in the Big Ten. Mm -hmm. I didn't really get like, – I you, you always hear people talk about it, but when you are speaking to somebody directly and they're talking about my chances to get to the NFL are increased by being able to say, here's my film from me facing off versus Aiden Hutchinson. Here's my film facing off against George Karlaftis. Like, you don't need to go to a bowl to show that you can match up with these top-level players. If you show it week in and week out, that is so useful. And I think that's kind of – Greg is using that to his advantage really well as a member of the Big Ten. That that's something that he didn't have as a Big East member or an AAC member, whatever it was when he left. Mm. I mean, that, yeah, it's definitely a huge difference between <laughs> selling them on the Big East versus the Big Ten. But uh, yep. yeah, I think end of the day, like I, I hate to say it, but I feel like high school recruiting is just dying overall, and the transfer portal is just taking over. So, which is per it's okay with me. I mean, but because it's a little more, it's a little easier talking to a twenty-two year old, twenty-three year old than. A 17 year old 16 we're talking to 15 sure. year olds sometimes it's it's crazy but um yeah i mean selling the big 10 is a big selling point especially like we talked about in the past that what do they have like three four defense or edge rushers that are probably going to be in the first round second yeah, round day, something like that yeah ridiculous between hutchinson maybe a top three top five pick call i don't even know how to say his name george carl uh, george call uh, i think yeah there we go maybe the future giant for all we know that's what it looks like Knock on wood, maybe 
But um, yeah, no, it, playing in the Big Ten definitely makes a hell of a difference, and it's on the recruiting trail and in in terms of NFL stuff. For sure. Um, so sky is not totally falling, guys. Uh, I do think it's very promising, like you said, how well we're doing with a lot of really high level out of state kids. Like mm-hmm. you would never expect to be in it with like a top 50 Florida kid as deeply as we are with like Hakeem Williams. Like, yeah. and the list goes on and on. I, I, I don't think we're in a bad place. It does suck that we're losing uh, Jasir and that he might end up at a place like Penn State. But yeah, the I mean, class I- is still young. Like I said, the Florida class is ridiculous, and they're doing extremely, extremely well with Hakeem Williams. And that's not just the only one. There's Santana Fleming, who's still tweeting out Chop 23 every once in a while, teasing that. Yep. You guys are all following him, so he loves it because you guys are gaining – he's gaining followers and stuff. But yep. um, Brayson Rogers, who's cho- probably going to end up in the end choosing between Bama, Rutgers, and – I forget who his third one was. Maybe it was a Texas or Texas A&M or one, one of those, but whatever. I mean, the fact that I'm putting Rutgers in the conversation with Bama should just show you how well they're recruiting in general. Absolutely. And then um, I actually talked to a Florida coach today. who I, I ended up making some profiles for him for his guys, but he's uh, got a couple good connections to uh, the Scarlet Knights. He's very close with Nunzio, former New Jersey guy, uh, very close with Fran Brown, has worked with him in the past in, in like some of these camp settings when they were allowing high school coaches to work. Now he's a head coach down in Tampa and Rutgers went and visited him early December and he gave me a call today and I didn't, I'm like, why the hell is this guy calling me? So I started talking to him, not to get super off track, but no, go for it. He goes, yo, I want to let you know, I played ball with Joe Harris Simiak. I'm like, no shit. Really? I played ball with him? And he goes, yeah. And then I went back as a GA and he was a, uh, he was a GA at Springfield too. And I was like, no shit. Look, you, you know what? Hold on. Let's, let's, let's get this on, on a uh, recording real quick. So We'll have that out soon, but it, it just goes to show like Rutgers is pursuing these these schools all throughout Florida, whether it's Cypress Bay landing Dante Chin that no one even heard about. Now they're pursuing down in Tampa at a different school about where this coach was at, which you'll see and hear, read, whatever, read more about on Sunday, Monday. I forget when I scheduled it, but whatever. But uh, yeah, no, I mean, hell, pursue Florida as much as possible. They're landing so many people out of there. I don't see a reason to stop. Yeah, I mean, Shiano's had a pretty pretty good track record with under-the-radar guys from, from the Sunshine State. Like, if you just, like, look back at, like, classes from, like, 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006, like, they're littered with, with Florida kids. And, you know, if you talk about the Lowrys, you talk about Ryan Hart, you talk about Eric, or, uh, Eric Foster, like, you know, he was just getting these guys out of Florida and – He's he give him, give him give him credit. He saw something in these guys that not a lot of programs in the area did. And the level of athlete in Florida is just so much better than New Jersey overall. So oh yeah, it's it's completely different. Um, they're they're a lot more speedy, a lot faster, uh, a lot more. You can argue athletic too. Whereas here up here, it's more like Big Ten football, where it's more like ground and pound, big uglies in the trenches, but. Uh, another kid who we might even be doing an instant reaction pot on soon is Andy Jean, who's coming up from Florida this weekend to go to yeah. for the visit for the junior day on Sunday. And he seems extremely, extremely high in Rutgers. Um, I posted articles on him already. Uh, I'm sure you guys have all seen that, but he's got Georgia. He's got uh, Miami. I might have been the old staff regardless. Pitt, Rutgers, Tennessee, West Virginia. But he's a kid that could end up committing pretty, pretty darn early and if we will really soften the blow of losing Peterson, if you can land him on su- starting on Sunday. Yeah. So uh, the, the list for the junior day will continue to grow as you guys get confirmations on guys. What's the list sitting at right now, roughly of confirmed guests. Um, big name. So what we're doing now is we're not really going out of our way to like get all the like random names that end up popping up, but, but there's a couple of big names like Andy Jean's one, Kenny Johnson's one out of uh, Dallas Town, PA, who I'm actually a very, very big fan of. Doesn't have a Rutgers offer yet. Um, I think we actually still have him unranked at the moment. I know he did get his ranking. Top 15 kid in Penn State, or it's in Penn State, in Pennsylvania, but I have him pegged for Penn State at the moment because he's very high on them. But Rutgers can kind of get into the fold and maybe like, maybe talk him off, talk him off the ledge a little bit and be like, hey, you want to come back over here? And then figure that one out but um Austin Ramsey an offensive lineman out of Pennsylvania he's another top kid I think he's a 5.73 star Javon Williams is one of the best um offensive linemen in the entire country uh he's ranked 148 in overall recruit in the country he's coming to campus the number 59 overall recruit from up in Massachusetts at Thayer Academy is coming to campus uh who, am I, who else am I looking at recent running back offer London Montgomery 
He just got Rutgers. Michigan State, Penn State's going to offer probably soon this weekend as well because he's going to hit there Saturday and then come to Rutgers on Sunday. Um, yeah, this list is just going to keep growing and growing. And we have um, other lists on the site too. For January 25th, they're going to have a couple more guys. Mostly Jersey guys, it seems like the 25th is going to be. Whereas the 20 or the 16th this weekend is going to be mostly out of state guys. Then um, later in the month, January 29th, they're, they're hosting Anwar O'Neill, who's number two ranked kid in Delaware currently. Mm -hmm. um, he has a Rutgers, or he doesn't have a Rutgers offer yet, but he has Maryland, Pitt, et cetera, et cetera, and all the other ones. Um, but yeah, no, this list is just, just going to keep growing and it's going to be kind of cool to follow it as and track it a little bit as uh, the days go by. But Rutgers is going to have a ton of, ton of guys on campus this January. Uh, yep. even in March or April, whenever the spring game is too, you're going to see these lists just keep growing and growing. And one thing I've noticed is that these lists go from when Ash was here, we had to list everybody because it was like unranked kids, two stars. And it's like, oh shit. Oh, hey, there's a four star. <laughs> and then now you're, oh, he's coming because his whole team is here. Got yeah. It. But now you look at the list and it's like, all right, this kid's coming up from Florida. He's got a Georgia offer, a Miami offer. This kid's coming up all the way from Western PA, and he's got – he's the 148th ranked kid in the country. Samson Okalunla on Okunlola. There we go. Got it. Uh, out of Massachusetts, he's number like 56, 57, something like that in the country, and he's coming down from Massachusetts. And it's like, all right, holy shit, like this is this is different. Like, Yeah, I know we mentioned some so we'll last time. We'll probably get some reactions on that. Uh, his brother ended up at Pitt. We, we, we were talking about like his brother ended up somewhere – so just kind of fill yeah, in that gap. I remember that. Um, yeah, I completely forgot where he I, – I can't believe he ended up there. They actually just um, – I don't know if you saw what they did. They just stole Frank Signetti out of uh, Jeff Halfley's pocket over there. So I didn't remember where Signetti was recently because that guy's like – he's a fucking gypsy, man. He go, He's in a new program every year, it seems. I think he was the head coach at, uh, at JMU at some point. Right? Uh, that, no, that was – I think that's his son. I'm, correct me if I'm wrong. I think that's Frank Signetti the third or something Signetti. Kurt Signetti? I think that's Kurt Signetti. Maybe. Yeah, that was Kurt Signetti. His dad. Okay. Is, or maybe that's his. Wow. That might be his brother the more I look at it. Yeah, he's yeah, he just, was born in 61. Okay. So his, the Frank Signetti senior was a former yeah. head coach at West Virginia and IUP. And compiled a record of 199, 77, and one is in the College Football Hall of Fame. Yep. Uh, wow. And his brother, Frank, is the OC now at Pitt, former Boston College. His other brother is at James Madison, I, 12 and 2, 14 and 2, 7 and 1, killing it, apparently. <laughs> yeah, since, since Frank was uh, the Rutgers offensive coordinator, he's had, that was in 2011. Yeah, Kurt, Kurt had, a record of yeah, 100, 100 wins and 31 losses. Holy yeah, he's man. a good coach. Yeah, he's had five different stops since he left Rutgers, uh, mostly in the NFL. They were able to actually pry him. Boston College is able to pry him away from being Aaron Rodgers' quarterback coach to be their offensive coordinator, which is pretty impressive. Actually, no. He, that. that was when McCarthy got fired, right? Yep. yep. So that makes sense. I think that was McCarthy got fired. Then he was Giants QB coach under McAdoo. Something like that, yeah. yeah. So that's so, that's got to be – Boston College, we've kind of referenced how they might not have as much money as a lot of local programs to spend on this kind of stuff, and that kind of, I guess, rings true with this move. I can't imagine that he would have uh, – given that, you know, Jerkovic is probably a guy who might be an NFL-level prospect, I can't imagine he would leave – that situation unless he was getting paid a lot more money yeah i was a little shocked by that one but now it's it's definitely interesting it has an effect on Rutgers because that's your season opener and you're gonna kind of have to change your offense a little bit you already have you have to go a little bit pro style kind of it's like your yep. thing at bc and then frank the frank runs it probably better than just about anyone out there yeah so i, I don't know what you do because you can't really just go out and if you're half me like all right we're gonna get this uh this spread guy he's pretty good he's up and comer shit Jerkovich can't move. Yep. Well, because the Rutgers might, man, you never know now. Now it's getting interesting between the four linemen coming in and now Frank Signetti out at Boston College. This, this game, this spread would have, if it did come out early, I don't think it did, it would have shifted like a ton. For Maybe sure. Maybe not in Rutgers' favor, but like it would have got a lot, lot closer. Yep. Um, 
So we're running a little long for an instant reaction, but this has been some yeah, awesome realized. banter. Uh, keep your heads up, guys. Uh, we have more good news on the horizon, I'm sure. We have at least one commit that we're kind of alluding to that might be happening soon. Uh, mm -hmm. We have plenty of guys coming up for Junior Day, so stay tuned to the board. Stay tuned yep. to this podcast feed because who knows, maybe we'll have some news to report on Sunday. Uh, a lot of NFL action going on, so I hope there isn't news to report so we don't have to record on Sunday. But regardless, appreciate you guys for tuning in. And this has been another episode of the Nightport Podcast, signing off.